If you think doing some planning for your stage 2 and stage 3 inclusion body myositis is difficult, just thoughts and prayers. I was once in a stage that many of you are in, as well as also entering the part of the journey that many others are already experiencing total dependency. Your planning for when you are totally dependent on someone else should have been in the making since shortly after your diagnosis. Although planning for the time all along your IBM journey is important, everything should have been pointed at the time that will be later defined as your end game when you are 70 to 100 percent incapacitated. In this mini-series, I've shown you only a small percentage of trials and tribulations experienced with this awful disease. There wouldn't be enough room on the YouTube network, nor would I have the energy to document every little problem I've attempted to overcome. I've always stressed that looking into your future, and sometimes a long ways into your future, will best prepare you for your end game with IBM. There may be purchases that you make during your IBM journey that might seem to be way earlier than is actually needed, but you make that purchase because of the low price being offered for that item at that time. One example I have is a portable trolley hoist that I currently have over my bed. I came across this $5,000 setup that was basically brand new and purchased it for only $450 10 years ago. My long range plan is the utilization of this hoist getting me into and out of bed when my legs will no longer support the transfer. We've used it three or four times so far when my transfers to or from bed didn't go as planned. Believe it or not, my wife and I have already practiced using this hoist with a full bodied sling that came with the purchase. In the past year since mentioning the purchase of a sit to stand lift, I have received several questions regarding how easy it is to use. Questions about if an IBMer would be able to use the sit to stand if they have no leg strength at all. The sit to stand does not seem to require much, if any, leg strength as the knees are buttered up against the knee plate bracket and the patient simply leans back against the sling as the lift arms are raised. So in reality, the lift forces are pulling you forward against your knees, not straight up on your knees. Another question, will a person being raised slip out of the sling if they don't have any upper arm strength? That shouldn't occur if you have a properly fitted sling. There's also a strap loop that is crossed over your chest and additionally helps hold you in place. I've tried several long transfers between my recliner in the living room to my bedroom or bathroom without the fear of leg collapse or falling out of the sling. If there ever is a need, you can add a butt sling that goes underneath your bottom side to hold you in place. Throughout your stage 2 and stage 3 years, you should be thinking about the methods and means not only to help yourself, but more importantly to be of some help to your caregivers. The longer you have IBM, the more you'll realize that it's your caregiver that you'll have to think about in your future. Think of the safety of your caregiver's actions as they commit to doing more and more for you as your IBM journey goes on. Regardless of whether your caregiver is a spouse, one of your children, or a paid attendant, if they get injured, you may be the one that ultimately pays the price. Here's a note of caution that might surprise you. If you hire an independent care person and they get injured helping you, you, the homeowners, may be liable for the injuries they sustain while working. Many families assume that their homeowner's insurance will cover the cost of the injured caregiver's medical bills, rehabilitation, and lost wages. Unfortunately, most homeowner's insurance coverage is limited at best, so you'd better check with your insurance agent first. We've discussed high-low beds in many of my IB myositis videos. Buying a high-quality, high-featured bed up front may result in less overall cost compared to buying two or three different beds along your IBM journey. I studied the heavy-duty design of the TransferMaster bed when I was shopping for them more than eight years ago, and it has stood up to the constant plopping of my almost 200-pound frame day after day, night after night, month after month, and year after year. Your IBM disability can make the activities you used to enjoy more difficult or even impossible, but staying engaged will make a big difference in your mental health. 
Look for creative ways to participate differently in old favorites or take this opportunity to develop new interests. Making these videos is my way of maintaining my mental health condition since I'm no longer to do any physical stuff like woodworking or metal detecting. Don't compare yourself to others with IBM or to your past self and don't discourage yourself by comparing where you are at today to where you were in a previous IBM stage. The only healthy way to judge your progress is by comparing where you are today to where you were yesterday. Nutritious eating is important for everyone and even more so when you're battling physical limitations. You'll start to notice that when you eat healthy, balanced meals, you'll feel more energetic and satisfied afterwards. In contrast, when you opt for junk food or unhealthy options, you won't feel as good. Consume plenty of high quality protein. Protein is essential to the immune system. Minimize sugar and refined carbs. You may crave sugary snacks, baked goods, or comfort foods such as pasta or french fries, but these feel-good foods quickly lead to a crash in mood and energy. Drink plenty of water. Your body performs best when it's properly hydrated and also helps flush our systems of waste products and toxins. Again, food goes in, waste comes out. I don't think there's any doubt about how having a bidet benefits an IBMer. A good bidet is worth its weight in gold, whereas the least expensive bidets that can be found might not work out as well. You'll require a bidet that has a solid design to withstand the IBM plop. I mistreat my bio bidet BB2000 every time my almost 200 pound frame sits down on it. As your IBM arms and hands weaken, it's easier to operate a remote between your thumb and fingers than it is to find and push down a button mounted alongside the toilet seat. You might find it odd that I say this, but a bidet attachment is one of the most helpful devices to help your spouse and caregiver. So much for talking about my IBM past and present. What about my future? As weak as I've become and as little as I can do, here are the things I'm constantly thinking about at the current time. My swallowing is going downhill about as fast as anything. I had a throat study done a year and a half ago that showed some trouble, but at a subsequent visit with a speech therapist, I was told they didn't see a problem. Is there an esophageal dilation or cricopharyngeal myotomy procedure in my near future? Or if that doesn't work, would I ever want a PEG tube installed? A more immediate need is to decide on how to get out of bed to go to the bathroom that's easiest for my caregiver. Right now my thoughts are that using the sit to stand lift might be the easiest method, although I also have the option of using the overhead hoist over the bed to my power chair then using the hoist over my toilet to position me on the toilet. While we all claim we are in this together, it's true that we all have our own circumstances that affect our futures with this thing called IBM. In a book written by Jim Beavers titled Life's That Way, he writes, Today we fight, tomorrow we fight, the day after we fight. And if this disease plans on whipping us, it better bring a lot because it's going to have a long day doing it. Inclusion body myositis isn't contagious, but helping other people with inclusion body myositis can be. Watching IBM from a front row seat isn't pleasant in any stage, but if you take time to turn around and see all the people with this disease sitting behind you, you'll understand why helping them is so important. If you enjoyed this mini-series about my IBM experience, smash that thumbs up and like buttons and make sure you are subscribed to be alerted to any future episodes. Leave me some comments in the comment section below the screen. Sharing this IB Myositis channel with your family and friends is a great way to educate them about your IBM condition. Until next time, don't paint yourself into a corner and keep fighting, my IBM friends.